For you alone, oh God, are worthy of all praise. And we thank you, Lord, for such a time as this, that we are allowed, oh God, to open up our voices to praise and to magnify your holy name. Oh 
name above all names. You are the name. Lord, how great, how great, oh Lord, how 
say you inhabit the praises of your people. So Lord, thank you for coming to make a resting place here with us. Do what you came to do, Lord. Be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to our, oh my goodness, this amazing worship ensemble. Amen. God will honor you for your sacrifice. Amen. I'm just here briefly to provide announcements. So don't go too far. We're going to go into tithing offering right after the announcements. Amen. But you may be seated for a moment. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good morning, Glory Center Family Church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. My name is Sophia Iwabi, and I'm here to bring you the GC Family News. At Glory Center Family Church, we are cultivating the atmosphere of heaven. Amen. Amen. This year has been the movement on the big wheels based on Ezekiel chapter 1. Every Sunday we gather here at 9 a.m. for our glory hour. And then we have our worship service at 10 a.m. Our doors open every Sunday at 8.45. And we have our Glory Cafe available. Amen? On Wednesdays, we gather on Zoom at 7 p.m. for Word Addicts. And this is an opportunity for us to grow as... Hmm, grow in our ability to hear the voice of God by reading His Word. Amen? So we have been reading Psalms, Proverbs, Old Testament, New Testament every single day. And today, by the grace of God, many of us have been able to accomplish reading the Bible in one year. But it doesn't stop here. We're going to start again tomorrow. Amen? Hallelujah. For those of us who were able to complete it, well done. For those of us who need to catch up, well done for just being part and parcel of what God is doing and being able to take time to read his word. One, last year I told someone, I said, sometimes I only read on Wednesday so I can at least have something to say on that Wednesday word. And they, and they said, you know, there's grace. It's okay. At least you're calling in. At least you're, you know, the Lord is revealing something to you. But, you know, I had a desire to finish. Amen. I'm still working on that desire. Amen. And I'll keep on joining. I'll keep on reading the word. Amen. So we do live stream to YouTube on Dr. Ify Nathan's YouTube page um, so that we're able to catch up if you're not able to join on Zoom. We have our prayer line open every Thursday at 9 p.m. for corporate prayers. But we are going into the first week of the month. And we actually are going to the first month of the year. Amen. And so January will be a 30 days of prayer and fasting. Amen. And that will start on Tuesday, I believe. No. We start, um, Apostle, January. Do we start on the 2nd of January? It was 30 days. Yeah, so we're going to, the first, we will not be fasting on the first, but the prayer and fasting will start on the 2nd through the 31st. So it's 30 days. Amen. So our prayer line will be open every day from 6 a.m., 12 noon, and 9 p.m. Amen. Oh, I okay. Glory to God. So tonight is our crossover service. We are crossing over into 2024 to the glory of God. And we are gathering again at 9.30 p.m. And we're going to be here until 2024. <laughs> and so invite your loved ones to join you. Many people are looking for churches to be able to gather and to worship Jesus. And so please let them know our doors are open. And we look forward to seeing what God will do tonight. Amen. This month has been a month of many birthdays here at Glory Center Family. Uh, today is actually our ambassador, Eze Nwoji's birthday. 
And so we want to call and celebrate him as he's um, coming back from his trip with his family. We had so many birthdays this month. Pastor Carmela from the 8th, Minister Alma on the 16th, Lady Nicole on the 17th, Sister Favor Kaha on the 25th on Christmas, and Pastor Cordelia yesterday on the 30th. Our POP celebrated her birthday. I pray you called her and celebrated her, but we're going to celebrate her today with cake. Amen for everybody. Amen. <laughs> Glory to Jesus! How many of us have heard about the Bethel Campus Fellowship National Conference? Have you heard of it? Have you heard of it? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we are going to Bethel Campus Fellowship's National Conference next year, February 16th through the 18th. That's Friday the 16th to Sunday the 18th. Amen. And the theme for this year is power amen power we have a brief um promo video that we want to show you and then i'll have one more slide amen it's time to shout hallelujah glory to jesus christ of nazareth for all he has done for us in the Ministry of Bethel Campus Fellowship, BCF. I'm sure that's a name you are familiar with. I am George Uden, the National Director of that organization. That organization started 20 years ago here at Bowie State University. We have had fun just doing ministry. And what are we actually doing, you may ask? We are leading students to Christ and discipling them, preparing them to become reliable men and women that God can entrust with his word for the next generation. And why am I here today? You may ask. I am here to invite you to our 28th year anniversary, which is going to be in the year 2024. In the year 2024, we are planning to celebrate big, to thank God for what he has done across this country and beyond. This ministry has reached more than 65 schools in the United States. And I want to say thank you to the Lord for all of that, because I know that students are in need of encouragement. Students are in need of being taught and being taught the real gospel. So by God's grace, we have fulfilled all of that in the past 20 years, and we're still fulfilling that as we speak and um, I want to use this opportunity to invite every stakeholder in all that we have been doing if you have been participating if you have participated and maybe not even participating currently I want to invite you to our 20th year anniversary next year starting from the annual BCF conference that is holding at North Carolina Bridgeway Center, Ridgecrest, North Carolina. You are welcome to be part of it. We are assembling everyone, including the alumni, our alumni for 20 years. We want you back. We want to celebrate with you. Now, I, I don't know how to show my excitement, but I'm truly excited that God has used us for 20 years, 20 years of ministry, and we're not tired. And we're not retired. We're just getting refired to continue reaching out to students, college and high school students. So thank you for listening. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Amen. And every year we've been supporting what God is doing through Bethel Campus Fellowship. And today, December 31st, is the last day to register for a conference. Wow. Amen. So we wanted to make sure we shared uh, this promo video so that you can have an opportunity to send your loved ones, send your sons, your daughters, your nieces, your nephews, send yourself, send your best friend, send your co-workers. Amen. Uh, so the days just began. Amen. And so if you desire to come to this conference, please see me, CC Pastor Carmelis, please see 
Brother Toby, amen, and let us know your interest. And also, if you have people in mind and you're like, I want to make sure they can get plugged in, connect them with us. We would love to help them get to this national conference. And if you've never been, please, let's go. Amen. This last year, so many people came from our church, the, the children's ministry. Um, the Nwoji's been coming. Amen. Daniel's been coming for many years, actually. Um, I've been going. My uh, apostle and, and pastor, Ify Nathan, Dr. Ify Nathan, has been going. Um, pastor Carlos. Um, amen. And so, Olamide, Joshua. Amen. We will. Let's forget to join us at BCM National Conference. <laughs> amen. And so let us go and encounter Jesus. Amen. And transform the world around us. Amen. Amen. So last slide is that if you are here and it's your first time worshiping with us, please scan this QR code so that we can grab your information and connect with you after today. And I appreciate you for visiting us. And if you've been visiting us for a while, and you are interested in becoming a member, please scan this QR code so that Dr. Free Nathan can reach out to you about our membership class. Amen. And at this time, I would like to invite our very own apostle, Apostle Joshua Nathan. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, you can do better than that. Somebody shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. Praise hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We, we want to thank God, first and foremost, for life, abundant life, life that is full of joy and glory, life that God has sparked his light upon to be able to see the last Sunday morning of year 2023. Amen. I don't know about you, many pass through the valleys of the shadows of death, but we're still here. From January to February, to March to April, to May. I'll back up to April for a second. Just think about April. April the 20th. And six days after in the ICU. April the 20th, under the surgeon's knife, going through the nose into the brain. And we are still here. Come on, somebody. I, come on, somebody. And you have your testimony. I have my testimony. Each and every day, God has started us off on a fresh journey anoint our head with oil and cause our cups to run over. We have joy. I said, I have joy. Tell yourself, I have joy. Tell your neighbor, I have joy. The joy of the Lord that is my strength. Amen. I want to thank each and every one of you that has made it possible for us to celebrate another Sunday, another day, another year. We are closing out our 32nd year, so next year we're going to get into our 33rd year. Amen. Come on, give the Lord praise. Amen. Of the Lord's goodness to us in the land of the living. Somebody say amen. Oh, I have so many testimonies. This morning the Lord woke me up and said, you know, release the spirit of joy in his house. And so we came here and we cultivated that atmosphere of joy. I want to say to you that joy is a powerful spiritual factor. I said it's a spiritual factor. It is a very, the spirit of joy is the very first of the fruit of the spirit. Are you with me? And, and, and that I, I was sharing this point that the, 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 the fist of, the, of, the, of, of Israel, all of the fist, were supposed to be under the atmosphere and the background and the backside of joy. That's why God says to them, have a fist, have a fist for me and bring all that you can. And when you count, don't come empty handed. Don't just come sorrowing. Come with rejoicing. Because joy determines the extent of the presence of God in the gathering of the people of God. 
Come on, somebody say amen. Isaiah 12, we'll say verse 3, I believe it says, With joy, help me somebody, shall we draw water from the wells of salvation? Are you with me? With joy, shall we draw. So today I'm excited when the Halal was going forth and we had all this orchestra, this wonderful musicians, you know, just come in here to join us in celebration. I said, God, this is a setup. So there will be an activation of joy in the house. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. It is so wonderful. Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 8, would say that the joy of the Lord is my, is my strength. It is my capacity. It enables me to accomplish what God has purposed in my heart. It helps me be able to cultivate the atmosphere of heaven. It makes a such light of God rest upon me wherever I go. The face of Jesus shines upon me. Because when, when, when there's no joy, God will back up and just, what is going on here? Just as he acknowledged at the baptism of Jesus by John, he says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That well pleased means I'm joyful concerning him. I want to say to you, may the Lord be joyful over you. May the Lord rejoice over you. That was why he separated and set up David as a man after his own heart. Because David understood the spirit of joy. And it is true. Help somebody worship. Come on, say the spirit of joy through the act of worship. Amen. So that means that your heart has to be right before God. Somebody say amen. amen. And when your heart is right before God, something happens. Go me to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And from verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 6. Oh, by the way, let me just stop here and acknowledge our awesome, awesome man and woman of God that he sent our way this morning. To my right is a prophet, Titus Jones. You probably saw him during the new frontier with the, you know, with the, the McLeans. Uh, he's prolific on the board. Uh, he's a prophet and he's, you know, God has used him and gifted him in different walks of his, of his, of his house. And so he's diligent, excited, cheerful to serve God. Hallelujah. When I told him we have nine o'clock, so I said, oh, Apostle, I have to be here at eight o'clock. Because I, I love coming a lot longer to set the atmosphere. So that's a young man that understands the Mr. Spirit. And to my left is one and only Minister Alfred. Alfred, amen. I didn't know you play, I didn't know you played the draw. I know you sing, but you know, so wonderful, wonderful man of God. A friend of the house, a man of God, so special, so beautiful, awesome man of God, and a friend of Pastor Kenneth and uh, Evangelist Sophia, and he offered to be with us today. Thank you so much, sir. We love and appreciate you. Amen. And from a long, long time, I can't even think when, from Ashland to Glory Center and Miracle Center and all over the place, she's been with us left the area and moved on to North Carolina and uh, a friend of the house uh, an awesome minister of the gospel, Apostle Rosalind. Amen. We love you. We love you. She's, she, when she walked in here, she's like, oh, I'm home. You know, and she jumped on her trumpet and was ready to go. So we celebrate you. Uh, you know, our other side is not out of heart. We love you so much. We thank God for the ministry that you have been bringing to the body of Christ. Amen. Would you put your hands there for this man and woman of God? Amen. That has come to celebrate Jesus. We're going to have more of that worship. Somebody say amen. 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 So, Second Chronicles, Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. I just want to also stop for a second and appreciate and thank every one of you 
uh, for your kindness towards God, your liberality towards God, your giving, your obedience to give to God in this house. It is because of your giving that the doors are open, that the lights are on, and that we are able to occupy the space. But by, by the grace of God, we're not going to be stuck in this place. Amen. We are going to our own land. Turn to your voice and say, we are going to our own land. Amen. Amen. To our own home. Amen. Psalm 126, when the Lord turned around our captivity, captivity were like those that dreamt. Somebody say, amen. amen. So you have been sowing and you have been sustaining this work. So we can come in here and rejoice and be hilarious and ecstatic for God's goodness. Verse 7, so let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. In other words, God loves a joyful giver. And so say to your neighbor, it's your giving with joy. Amen. All right, so let me turn this way without asking a question. Say to your neighbor, give with joy. And God will fill all your capacities in Jesus' name. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able, ha, makusi libre, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance of every good thing. I don't know about you, that's a whole loaded scripture. I even want to go to Ephesians 3.20 that God's able to make all grace abound towards you. Somebody say, man. Oh, my God. All grace. Somebody say, all grace. Not some, all grace. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. So let's give cheerfully. We're going to, when we pay our tithes, it's like paying our light bills and you know, you don't, you don't feel like, oh, I've done so much, but that's a demand of God. But when you top it off with your offering where you can be generous with God. Somebody say amen. Somebody say, I'm going to be generous with God today especially. As the last Sunday of 2023. Amen. So when God looks into your heart and sees joy, let it show in your capacity. Let it show in your release unto God. Let it be pleasing unto God. Let it be said that God looked upon my offering with joy because I gave it out of a cheerful heart. That I'm thankful for how kind he has been to me. And I purpose to make the devil mind mad and make heaven joyful. Amen. And so we do it through our tithes and our offerings. And right behind me you will see how we engage in transacting with God. Amen. This is our opportunity to give to God. Uh, uh, if we want to just plug in for a recurring giving, maybe towards our building project, it's okay every month. Uh, you know, uh, the church can take out a certain amount of money from your account. Then you do it through tightly. You can give your tithes and your offering there and also indicate it to be a recurring giving. Then we have also what we call the Michigan Building a Project, our building project, and you give through Giving Fuel. It's on there if you want to support the building project. And, and through the Michigan a plan that we have, the monthly giving unit, and uh, we'll explain that some other Sunday. And on the side, you have the Cash App. You know, that's, people are very familiar with that. And you also have the PayPal. You can write a check to Glory Center, or you can drop cash in the giving offering. Uh, we have the offerings here. This is the one for the regular church tithes and offering, and this is the one for our building project. It's called the Legacy Offering. Somebody say amen. If you're writing a check, you know, you can mail it to 9301 Lago Drive West, Suite 203 Lago, Maryland, 20774. Somebody say amen. And we bless God for everyone that gives. And if you are uh, paying your tithes this morning, would you please come forward? 
and uh, let's make our proclamation, our declaration over our tithes and givings and special projects to the glory of God. Hallelujah. today we are believing the lord for jobs and better jobs raising them bonuses benefit sales and commissions favorable settlements estates and inheritances great return on investments interest and income rebates and return checks in the mail money through online gifts and surprises favorable contracts and deals finding money debts paid off expenses decreased and blessings and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs, that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I will walk in the fullness of all that God has for me, my family and church. It shall be so. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Oh 
Yes, Lord, we believe your glory is already here. The glory of your presence is already here. Because we have the joy of the Lord. And with, with joy we are drawing water from the wells of salvation. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we have given cheerfully and joyfully and hilariously and with dancing and with excitement unto you. Ha, 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 ha. Receive our worship through our offerings and through our tithes and pour down your glory more. Pour down your healing more. Pour down your abundance more upon your children that we may be like those that their captivities have been turned around. Yes. That we possess a possession that the proclamations we make here every Sunday shall become a reality. That we will walk upon the capacity of God in us. Christ in us. The hope of glory. And so we thank you. And we rejoice before you. And we thank you for it is done. And as you're bringing financial abundance, you're bringing what money cannot buy. You're healing our body from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Healing every organ of our body, throwing away and cast away every infirmity, sickness, diseases. You are not a portion. You will not follow us into 2024. We declare it right now in the name of Jesus. And we say to you alone, be the glory for the opportunity. It is an opportunity. It is a privilege. It is a joy to give unto the Lord. And no one gives, cannot give you and no one gives to you that goes empty-handed. And so we receive all that God has given and released to us this day. To the glory of your name in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And all of the saints of God say hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory be to your name. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. The glory of his presence is already here. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. 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 One more time, we're gathering back here at 9.30 tonight. Oh, God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, it's going to be just incredible. Amen. We're going to gather back in this place at night. Somebody say 9.30. Amen. amen. It's a privilege to be in the house of the Lord to be alive and breathing. Amen. We make welcome our mama, Elder Chema Onyemobi, back from Nigeria. Amen. In celebration of what God has done, and for that we thank God. Also, we make welcome our freshly born and come to age uh, pastor of prayer. Amen. Dr. Cordelia Kafo. Amen. Amen. We we, we, we rejoice with you and we mourn with you. Amen. We are locked in. We are locked in. And God is your helper. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. God be the glory. At this time, we're going to make room in our hearts to receive the man of the hour. Uh, the one who is designated by God to close out our Sunday morning in 2023. That's a big deal. Amen. And we trust him. And we love him. We thank him for the capacity he carries a young man who loves the Lord deeply and dearly. And whose uh, salvation is real. And uh, who carries himself well in integrity, in love. And who God is using to, uh, you know, really, really navigate the movement with to the youth and the young adult on a nationwide platform. Dr. George, you know, talking about the BCF, he's one of the leaders in the BCF, and uh, he is my son, and then my son-in-law, and the father of my grandchildren, and uh, would you please join him in honoring us, and you have us to welcome Pastor Kamalos, the wife who has to share the word. Praise the Lord. Let's give those hands to Jesus. Let's give it to Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Apostle. 
thank you for the opportunity to share the word this morning. Um, it is truly a privilege. Thank you to everyone that's come to be a blessing. My brother, God bless you, bro. This man, <laughs> this man moves mountains so that he can be a blessing to me personally and to the body of Christ. Thank you, bro. I love you. Um, amen. Are we ready for the word? Welcome back unto Choma. Happy birthday. My POP. <laughs> Praise God. Let's, um, let's pray. Let's pray. Yeah, I want you to just pray and ask the Lord. Just ask the Lord to, to speak to you this morning. Just ask him to speak to you. So, Lord, speak to me. Speak to me a word that, Lord, I will carry into the new year. Oh, Jesus, speak to me, Lord. Speak to me. Speak to me. Speak to me. Speak to me. Speak to us, oh God. We have come to hear from you and not men. Lord, we have gathered before your presence, oh God. And we are asking, God, that you will speak to our hearts this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, we yield to you this place, O oh God. We ask that your hour, Lord, has come. Lord, <laughs> let your word come forth. Lord, through, through, through each, Lord, and every one of us, O oh God, through myself to your people, we ask, O oh God, that we will not leave here the same. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 You can have your seat. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are at the end of the year. <laughs> Isn't that something? 365 days. Hallelujah. So we have got through 365 days. Today is the last day. And you know what sensible people do during these times is to take a reflection. <laughs> That's if you are sensible. You, if you are not sensible, you just keep going. <laughs> Amen. But sensible people everywhere organizations that want to thrive, that want to, um, you know, uh, that want to be serious about their objectives, take time to reflect and analyze where have I been, where have we been in alignment with the objectives that we were set apart to achieve at the beginning of the year. Amen? And so, God like manner does the same thing. God is a God that reflects. He reflects in our lives. He says, I am the God that that weighs the heart. He says, I am the God that tries men to see where they stand, to see how I can reward them according to their deeds. Are you following what I'm saying? So, this morning, God wants to help us to analyze our lives. To really ask ourselves, for the past 365 days, how have our lives been in, in relation to his objectives and his purposes? Are you following what I'm saying? How has your life been in alignment with the purposes and the objectives of God. And so this morning, I've titled this message, God's Performance Indicators. Corporations use the word KPI, Key Performance Indicators. And it's a quantitative measure of their progress achievement towards their objectives. Amen? And so this morning, we're going to look at what God focuses on when he comes to evaluate our lives. 
in relation to his objectives and purposes. Are you with me? Tell your neighbor, is GPI there? <laughs> Hallelujah. But before you can even begin to measure and quantify the objectives are necessary. You have to have clear objectives. We have to know God's clear objectives and purposes. You see, Miles Monroe says, where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. When you don't know the object objectives of God for why we do all that we do, the capacity to abuse it is what? Inevitable. In fact, I add that not only is abuse inevitable, neglect is the outcome, final outcome. And so we have to understand what is God's objective? What, what, what is on the heart of God? But before we get there, I want to tell you about God's commitment to his purpose, to his objective. God is more committed to his objective than your what? your degree, or even your daily bread. <laughs> God is more committed to his what? Objectives than your what? Than your wealth, wisdom, and strength. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 23 says, let him who boast not boast in their what? Wisdom. Maybe Daniel can put that up for us. Why he puts that up, I want to run through this quickly. It says, this is what the law says, okay? Let the wise boast. Let not the wise boast of their what? Or the strong boast of their? Or the rich boast of their what? <laughs> so this time around, a lot of people, when they begin to evaluate their lives, they begin to count how many cars they bought this year? How much their bank account increased? How many degrees did they acquire? <laughs> are, you, are you following what I'm saying? But God is saying, if you are going to begin to evaluate your life, don't begin by the things that are ugly. Don't begin by the things of this world. Not even your own wisdom. Are you following me? So God is more interested in his purpose than who you want to marry. <laughs> Marriage is good. I'm a married man. Praise God. But God is more interested in his purpose than who you want and where you want to live and the food you want to eat. God is more interested. That's why Jesus says this, says this. When you pray, don't pray like this. <laughs> don't pray, Father, give me my daily bread. Don't, he said, don't begin there. That's, that's what our preoccupation is. Our prayer is preoccupied by the things that we want God from God. But Jesus teaching, he says, he trumps the Maslow's hierarchy of need. And he says, begin from the top. He says, my father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. How? As it is in heaven. Before he came, comes to give me my daily bread. Are you following what I'm saying? So the priority of God in, in order and cater of analysis is first his will and his purposes. Before the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the things that preoccupy us and we pursue. God is so committed to his purposes. Are you following what I'm saying? God is more interested in his purpose than the position you hold in your family, church, community, and the marketplace. 
You know, there was a story in Luke chapter 12 of, of a rich young man. Well, he was a young man. He was a rich fool. The Bible called him a rich fool. <laughs> the man at the end of, you know, I think he was at the end of the year. He saw how bountiful, maybe Daniel tells us in Luke chapter 12, how bountiful his harvest was. And he said, I will store up more and more, more harvest, more and more of this. And say, I am okay for the following years. Let me not put you this scripture. Daniel, take me to Luke chapter 12. Let's read this story. This is wonderful. I love this story so much. Let's start from verse 13. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in the abundance of what? possessions. Are you following what I'm saying? Verse 16, he says, and he told them this parable, the ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. Okay, so his 365 days yielded an abundant harvest. And so when he analyzed the work that he did that year, it was very abundant. Okay? So watch what this man there says. And I will say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many what? Years. <laughs> Some of our bank accounts can feed people in Nigeria for 50 years. My dad is in Nigeria and he's just telling people are suffering. Are you following what I'm saying? But that's a story for another day. He says, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be what? But God said to him, you fool. He says, this very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. So God's analysis begins by richness towards him first before your earthly possessions and harvest. Are you following what I'm saying? So God is more interested in his purpose than how many people attend your fellowship or church. I say this all the time. You don't need a crowd for Jesus to move. <laughs> Matter of fact, the, the biggest crowds in our day and time, Jesus is not there. <laughs> you have a football game. What draws the people there is not Jesus. <laughs> Do you agree with me? <laughs> the, the crowd is big. It's enormous. But Jesus is not what? So this is not about crowd. You see, Christianity is first of all a journey with God. A personal journey with God before it is corporate. And when God judges, he judges individuals. And so whether you are in a big church or you are in a small church, God begins by analyzing your lives in comparison to his purposes. Go to Manchester City. This is festive time. Their game alone draws up 50 plus people in one stadium. But Jesus is nowhere to be found. Are you with me? So that's why Jeremiah, the Lord says, if you're going to boast, don't begin with that. After he said that, Daniel, go back to Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23. What does 24 say? He says, this is where you should begin. 
verse 24. 24 says, But let the one who boasts boast about this, that they what? To know, to know me. Are you following what I'm saying? So God is saying that if you're going to begin to analyze your life, begin to analyze your life from the standpoint of knowledge of the Holy One. You see, knowledge of the Holy One is not cerebral. It's not, <laughs> it's not a, a, a exact quotation of scripture. Knowledge of the Holy One is experiential. That's why so many people are in churches, they beat the drums, they play the day, which all, they are ushers, they are pastors. They know the head knowledge, but the life of God is not present in their lives. So it's an experiential knowledge. I was in church. I grew up in church, Catholic church. I went to mass. I did all, but I did not know Jesus for 20 years of my life. Did I have intellectual knowledge of some scriptures? Absolutely. Was I serving? I was singing in the choir, but my... <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? But the experiential knowledge of the Holy One was far from my life. So this is where God says you shall begin from. Take me to my next slide. So we have seen the public, how committed God is to his purpose. What is God's purpose? What is his objective that we need to measure our lives to? That we need to really think about is everything I'm doing measuring up to achieve God's objective? Especially in the house of God. What is his objective? What is his purpose? men and women to rot things in their generation. The Bible said that Noah walked with God. Noah walked with God experientially that even though his entire generation was chasing Mary and Wadom and just enjoying their lives, he was the only one that was in alignment experientially walking with God. And he saw years ahead and knew what to do today to preserve the heritage of God for the next civilization. That is how powerful it is to journey with God in intimacy. So God wants us to journey with him. I read about the Bible says in, in Hebrews, time will not fail me to talk about uh, 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 Samson, Japheth. People that were valiant in war, like David, who walked in intimacy and knowledge of the Holy One that he says, by my God, I can scale any war. This man who he, he walked with God and he was even able to teach the people that were with him in the cave of Adullam. People that were distressed, discontented. And the Bible says that uh, 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 Eliezer, son of Dodo, was one of the three amongst his men. That this man at war, he, he, he killed 800 people with one spear and his hand froze to despair. What type of knowledge is that? Moses that walked with God, Moses, he was so angry for what his people was going through, he took matters into his own hands. And he killed an Egyptian. You see, when you take matters into your own hands, the byproduct of that is fear. You will flee. Though your concern for the issues upon the face of the earth is valid. But if, if you don't know the Holy One, if you have not met him, 
all you are doing is a waste of energy. In fact, it will land you running away from that which God wants to do with your life. And so when Moses encountered God at the burning bush, that was his first encounter. He met Jesus. And Jesus, God, you know, through Jesus in the Old Testament, in types and shadows, told him, first of all, you must let go. Let go of your sandals. Let go, let go of the way you know things. Surrender. As he surrendered, he, come, he came into a fellowship with God. And God began to journey with this man that now as he journeyed with the Most High, he didn't need to kill an Egyptian anymore. God now was responsible for what had happened in Egypt. And God walked with this man. Do you know what Moses did? The life of Moses was preoccupied by getting to know Jesus, getting to know God. This man will climb the mountain for 40 days. He will stay there. He says, I'm here to wait for you. And he will sit there. He's not sure if the Most High will come up, will show up, but he will sit there. Say, I'm interested in intimacy. I'm interested in, in priesthood more than what I want to do. And as he journeyed with God like that, the man stepped down from the mountain and he became like a God before Pharaoh. Intimacy, knowledge of the Holy One is where you need to begin. My question to you is, how much time did you spend with God personally in 2023? Not corporate gathering. I'm talking about your personal life. How much time did you devote to knowing God personally on your life? You see, God has called us a kingdom of what? Priests and kings. He says he has selected us to be a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to declare the praises of him. Before you can declare, you have to be a priest first. And priesthood is where we begin to learn about this God that we are going to declare his excellencies. So it begins by what? Priesthood, knowledge of the Holy One. It says, when you begin to boast, start there analyzing your life. Are you following what I'm saying? So as these men and women in the old journeyed in intimacy with God, look at Abraham. What God did. Everywhere the man pitched tent, but his altars were, were, were solid. His navigation was the voice of the Holy One. Say, go from here. Even with Joseph, when time of Jesus came, their navigation was their knowledge and intimacy of God. That God would say, Joseph, take this boy, run to, run to Egypt. Take this boy. The people want to. But if you can't get such directions, if you don't have intimacy, priesthood has to be present in your life. Are you following what I'm saying? So in the Old Testament, God did wonderful things with these people. But the Bible tells us now in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10 God, that God's purpose, his purpose was that now, somebody said through the word, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. According to the eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. So God's intention for the corporate body we are the church. You are the church. You, as many as, as we are that carry the presence of God, the spirit of God, we are the church. It says you are the body. We are the body of Christ. It says God's intention is that through you, his manifold wisdom shall be made manifest, not even to human beings. You know, we come to church where people are just slim for position. So you, you did this one, you did this one, you didn't come, you did this one, you didn't come, you did this one, I didn't do this one. He said, leave that thing. Who we are dealing with, it said, the Bible says our struggle is not against flesh or blood. It is against principalities. It's like against powers, rulers, and darkness in heavenly realms. They are in the, what we deal with is in heavenly realms. 
And as you journey in priesthood, you are able to win wars on the face of the earth. His purpose is that now, through you, the manifold wisdom of God shall be made manifest, what? To the rulers and authorities. So we wrestle not against flesh or blood, but principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what God wants to do with you, that your life becomes a sign and a wonder. God wants to make our lives a display of his glory. First today, heavenly realms. And as he makes it known to the heavenly realms, I'm telling you, the earth is just, it's just easy. Because nothing happens on earth without first happening. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says, Praise be the God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with what? Where are the spiritual blessings? <laughs> it's not on earth, though. <laughs> Everything that God has given you in Christ is where? Ross, say it's not at Bank of America. <laughs> because if God comes in a Bank of America, they can, they can bankrupt tomorrow. <laughs> are, you, are you following me? Yeah, he did not keep it with your father because your father may not like you tomorrow. <laughs> can, I, can I talk this morning? Yeah, because if he keeps you with your father, <laughs> your father may say, this one, I don't want you. Everything that God, <laughs> God has, has for every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus is coming somewhere in the heavenly realms. The question is, how do we travel to the heavenly realms so that we can bring on earth that which God has blessed us with? Are you following what I'm saying? It's not miss out where. John chapter 3 verse 27, they came to John. And say so they wanted to provoke jealousy in John. He said, John, the Jesus you baptize is healing more people than you. John looked at them and laughed. Look at you. He said, You don't know that no man can receive anything except you be giving them from where? Heaven. So don't be looking to men to make good do things for you. Your preoccupation is how do I travel to these heavenly realms? We are my blessings in Christ are what? Domicile. We are the purposes of God that he wrote about my life. The wisdom of God that he has apportioned for me before I was fashioned in my mother's womb. How do I bring it upon the face of the earth? Let's go to the next slide. These are scriptures you can read on your own, but I'm just going to take a few just to corroborate the points I'm making. I graphed, this is my graph. This is God's performance indicator. If you're going to journey to where the spiritual blessings are, where the purposes of God for your life is, you have to ascend. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. So when God looks at your life and wants to release the spiritual blessings he has for you, the things that he looks at, the things that he evaluates are these things in blue. 
These are the things that you need to make sure are present in your life. If you are able to ascend heaven. And so what priesthood does, when you begin to engage God and the knowledge of the Holy One, is that he makes sure that first, your life is congruent to what? Sanctification, consecration, righteousness, blameless, and holiness. Because you cannot do business with God who is holy without holiness. Are you, are you following what I'm saying? You can't do business with God who is blameless without blamelessness. That's why you need Jesus in your life because no man can be holy by himself. And so when you receive Jesus, Jesus now imparts you righteousness. And as you journey in priesthood, you are, priesthood, you are able to now rise up and receive inspirations from the Most High. You are able to know the voice of God, to know that which has called you to do, to know that which pleases Him, what He has apportioned for you before you were formed in your mother's womb. But the devil don't want you to ascend. Why? Because as you ascend to heaven, oh my goodness, you become a threat to the kingdom of darkness. And so what the devil fights most and foremost is your relationship with God. It's your intimacy with God. It's your knowledge of God. Your experiential knowledge of the Holy One. And so you can do everything, but when it's time to read the Bible, you fall asleep. You can watch all the movies, but when it's time to pray, Omo, sleep don't arrive. But you'll be wide awake watching movie. Wow. <laughs> Can I talk to somebody this morning? So that's what the devil fights. Your relationship with the Holy One. Because that's where, and as you journey in relationship with the Holy One, as you spend time knowing God, praying, God now begins to, to prune you. Your life will begin to now conform to the likeness and the image of God. You begin to look like Jesus. So when somebody spits at you, you are more in The Bible says the holy insults at Jesus he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threat. But instead, he committed himself to the one who judges justly. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. And so on when the gossip and all the backbiting and all the marginalization comes in your workplace, you are standing strong. Why? Because you know from where I come at my help. I help come at from the Lord, the maker of heaven not from men. That's why David can be in the cave of Abraham and not be afraid. chapter. I don't have time to talk about the leading indicators and the lagging indicators. But I, anyway, I want to read some of these scriptures. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. It says, I will know that all things work together for the good of those who love God to those who are called according to his. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the word image of his son. So that's the first thing. It's the confirmation or conforming to the image of Jesus Christ. As he is holy, you now become to be holy, like he is holy. As he is righteous, you begin to become righteous as he is righteous. As he is blameless, you begin to be conformed into blamelessness. As you give to the knowledge of the Holy One, experiential, not just cerebral. 
So if all you are doing in church is not changing you, that your anger is not, is not dying, you're wasting your time. If that addiction to pornography and masturbation is not dying, the whole intention, the Lord spoke to me before my daughter was born in 2020. He says that the whole intention for which God he left heaven and did all that he did is so that we will be like Jesus. That's why I my daughter is so holy. You have to be holy first. That's why Jesus says, and that day many will come to me. Didn't we do this in your name? Didn't we do cast out devils? He says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I don't know you. As you journey in, in, in the knowledge of the Holy, what begins to happen is that your flesh begins to die. The limitations of the flesh in your life, the flaws that you have begin to diminish. But you have to insist. God will insist that they die. Because if God will bequeath to you his spiritual blessings, you, your anger can finish everything in one day. You see, it's easy to destroy than to build so God doesn't want to just start building with you and one day your, your pride and your anger destroy that which he wants to do. And so he will insist that your pride and your anger and your lust must die. Conforming to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, chapter 4. It says, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain, abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of or defraud his brother in this matter because the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also for what you and testify for God did not call us to uncleanness but in holiness therefore who he who rejects this does not reject man but God who has also given us his Holy Spirit so you can reject what I'm, I'm preaching that's fine you reject me but you are not we are rejecting Jesus I speak for Jesus. I'm sorry, guys. I don't speak for men. I met Jesus. For 20 years, I was lost. I came to Christ not because anybody said, this might be a good thing for you. I wanted to know whether the things I've heard of this God was true. Whether the things that I have read was true. I began on a journey and a hunger to know Jesus. And the more I know him, the more I know he is worth following. First John chapter 3. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So as you receive Jesus, he begins to destroy the works of the devil in your life. And what the major work of the devil is to keep you in sin. Romans 8.8 8. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Revelation chapter 3 verse 5. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garment. And I will not blot out his name from the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. So that means that some people's name could be blocked off. So you can start. And if you don't give yourself to this continual ascension in sanctification and consecration and righteousness and blamelessness and holiness, your name can be blotted out from the book of life. devil wants you to stay here with him and the 
so the, the lands are not touching for a reason because you can't touch God. It's just it's on the ground. When you give to the devil, you come on the ground with him and just running around. You go here. So as we go into the new year and close it, let us rise. I want you to make a commitment. That I will align my life first to the knowledge of the Holy One. That I will give my life to Jesus wholly so that he can remove that which is of the devil that which is earthly. And somebody is praying this morning. Come on, pray with me. Kina kaza buke nuke zuna. Re kazuna kane mkone kese zina kaza. Re kazuna makande kese tena makande funa kaza zine. Oh Lord my God, oh Lord my God, read me, read me of that which is earthly. Rid me of that, O oh God, which is not earthly. In the name of Jesus Christ, help me, O oh God, to reorient and realign my eyes, Lord, on that which, Lord, holds weight in eternity. In the name of Jesus Christ, that I will not begin with the mundane things of this world. Help me, O oh God, to not, Lord, keep focus on the earthly things, O oh God. Lord, help us, O oh God, to keep our eyes, O oh God, away from the possessions of this world. But Lord, keep our gaze upon Jesus. Lord, we ask of you. You know, I'm going to make a quick call for anyone who says, I know I can identify I've been partnering with the devil, that I need to ascend, that I need to walk more in holiness and righteousness and lay hold of the heavenly things that God has for me. If that's you, I would like for you to come. If that's, if, that's, if that's you, I want you to come forward. Oh, there's someone in this place. Oh, Jesus, have that one. Have that one, oh God the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask of you. 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 We ask of you, Lord. holy like you are holy remove oh God the things of this world from our hearts rid us oh God that which is earthly make us like you God that we may take hold of the heavenly spiritual blessings that you have for us oh Lord our God Oh, Most High, we ask of you. Help that one, Lord. Help that one, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, Apostle. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 The, the Lord calls us in the book of Ephesians that we put off the old man. That we take it off. It is our ability, our choice to unrobe ourselves of everything that is fluid, that's ungodly, it is intentional, and so part of the reflection as we move in this hour ahead of us, speak to yourself as the Lord, the Spirit of God to help us. What are those things that need to be put off, taken away, so our minds can be renewed? after the word of God. Are you with me? So we can walk blameless before God, so we can be consecrated, walk in sanctification, totally separated unto him. So the Lord will speak to you as we have heard this morning. What needs to go? What needs to be put off? That our minds may be renewed that we can put on is a process and we have the ability and this is something we don't just do at the, the last day of the, of the year we do it constantly and ongoing and don't allow you know, guilt and the devil to hold you back that's why Romans 12 says I beseech you brethren by the message of God that you present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is a reasonable offering unto God, that we may know that which is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. I pray that the church, we, you and me, will become so conditioned to allow heaven's evaluation to be able to set us apart constantly and all the time. And that's how the presence of God can come. That's how we can encounter him. That's why we can see the face of Jesus. That's why we can actually be able to walk in freedom and in confidence. And with joy, we'll draw water from the water of salvation. I pray that we shall internalize the word we have heard this morning and let it become the landscape of our spiritual pursuit and purpose that God himself will be able to help us in the journeys ahead. Hallelujah. But I want to also affirm to you that every time you bring the situations under the blood of Jesus, he takes over, he takes control. God puts in a line that cannot be crossed by the enemy. It is only us that try to dwell on the guilt of the past. But once you hand it over to Jesus, hello somebody, and under his blood, you are free. You are free. When the devil comes with guilt of your yesterday, remind him of his future. Tell him that it's under the blood. Somebody say amen. If you receive this word this morning and you have made commitments under the blood to move forward with God, it is well with your soul. I say it is well with your soul. And don't go back to the field and the mess of yesterday. Because Jesus is Lord in your life. Ephesians 1 3 says that you are seated in heavenly place with Christ Jesus. Somebody say amen. So sit with him operate from your position of righteousness and walk in faith and in victory and i want you to know what this message of reflection 
you can rate yourself for the greater things to come in 2024. Come on, give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Let, let's pray for Pastor Cam. Father, we just want to pray for this man of God that you raised up in this generation, our generation, his generation, generations to come. Father, we pray that you will continue to hold him strong. You continue to encourage him. You continue to stand by him. He is your man. Stand by him by day and by night. Every harassment of the enemy against him will not stand. We declare that Jesus is Lord, that he will keep setting the captives free from one area to the other, from one city to the other, from one nation to the other, that you will encourage him, that you will be his God, that no weapons of the enemy formed against him or his family shall ever stand, and all tongues that will rise up in judgment against him we condemn. And so we uphold it by the Spirit of the living God and declare it is well with you. So as mountains surround Jerusalem, we surround you with the sure walls of God, with the sevenfold walls of God, in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you and keep you, even as you have given of the substance of the Spirit. May the Lord refill you a thousandfold, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you, we bless you, we bless you, we give you the glory for his life. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Come on, give the Lord praise in his house, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Put your hands together for my doctor, if he later as she comes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Cam, for the word. Amen. Hallelujah. The last Sunday of the year. Hallelujah. My job here is very simple. I am the um, hostess of the hostess. <laughs> to have your miracle moment. Some of you have testimonies that you want to leave in 2023 because you're expecting greater things in 2024 amen and if you're such a one amen as you come bring a mic with you we have a few minutes and then we will close hallelujah who's gonna be the first one hallelujah amen hallelujah glory to god amen amen hallelujah glory to god Awesome God. All thanks, praise, glory, honor belong to Him. Um, I just want to thank Him for His faithfulness. As I stand, I'm giving thanks of uh, that is sacrificial. You know, when you thank that you you mourning in your heart, it's a uh, it's sacrificial share thanksgiving and that what the Holy Spirit has ministered to me over this period say so give thanks sacrificially I lost a dear mom it cost deep not that she didn't live her full years mama lived to 90 and I give thanks to God of all the kids she has um, I'm the last of them, at least the living ones. But Mama was my best chair lady. I couldn't do wrong before her. But in all those, I bring them as thanks unto God for giving her the time she lived to support me. To giving her the time to to be there to say go ahead for you. When I came here, it was because Mama was there 
that I'm able to come to this country. And I had a full trust. She could abandon all she was doing in her own end. And she, she had a lot to do with her late husband. She had to move to the other part of the country in the West just to be with my family, to give them that motherly comfort and protection. She did more than ministry unto God. There's, if I've done, if I've accomplished anything in life, Mama takes credit of 80% because she will never complain. In fact, when you want to give her, she will share it to others. Uh, when she calls her, you say, do you do night today? That's the first thing. She wants to be sure that I'm protected. I just want to thank God for the liability. I wanted her to live forever on earth, but we all know it's not possible. And one great regret is that I had wanted to go see her. I couldn't achieve that. But all those I give thanks back to God. Because if he didn't allow it, if he wanted me, it's nothing before God. He has done great and mighty miracles. Unimaginable and unprintable for me and others. He could do that. But that thing is by and by that we get to know with life. But in all that, I submit his will, 120%. And I want to thank him for the thing God. I want to thank God. I so much appreciate him. And I've been to a place that is worse than this time that she passed, that I couldn't know that she would see the next day. There have been occasions they've called me here times with that number. And when you get to the hospital, she bounces back. She has had a doctor that oversee her for close to 15 years. It was only at this time the doctor said, my mom wants to go. All the things they wanted to do to her, doing extra all those things, physical therapies, she keep on, she was shaking her head. She wanted to go and I submit to the will of God. And I thank you all for all the prayers you have for me and the children at this difficult time. It goes a long way. Thank you. Thank you, Apostle, for you're always there <laughs> before I could call. And thank God. I thank him immensely for the grace that um, he bestowed upon me and the family within this period. In, in my flesh, I would want to mourn deep, but my spirit is lifted within me. It didn't put it. I don't know why, but I know it's the grace. I can't explain what happened. Even when I got the news, of course, the first shock I had it, the pain came, but it couldn't settle. And it's all the grace of God. Because prayer, she gave us one week to process her passing and death. And within that one week, we were operating and um, expecting things to happen and uh, we process it. Or like you would have woken me up. Nigeria is not a place to come and say, call 911. When she was sick, she couldn't eat, she couldn't move again. Uh, she could have passed overnight or while in her sleep, but they brought her over to the city and did all they could do. I just want to bless God and that thank you. Please continue to pray for my family. Continue to pray that this process will go smoothly. We've not talked of anything, how to give for a final rest. I find a goodbye, but I know that when time comes, I will let you people know. Thank you so much for praying for me yesterday. It's a mixed feeling this week. But once I didn't know how to handle my fears. I didn't know whether to rejoice for my birthday or to mourn for my mother's passing until the children kicked in and they took over and, uh, and they were moving everything to make sure that I didn't settle. But it was hard this week. That's the hardest week I passed for me to to share my birthday, if anybody knows, I always want to blow it up, let the whole world know it's my birthday. I couldn't do it. I had a restriction, <laughs> but I was still rejoicing. People were still calling me. I couldn't know what to do for the first time. I told my friend, I said, I'm confused. <laughs> but I give all the glory to God because of his faithfulness. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Apostle. Uh, she's here right now. Father, we just thank you. For truly your word is, is manifest in your daughter's life. That your grace is sufficient for her. 
that Lord God, your strength is made known in her weakness. Our Lord and our God, just like she testified, that truly in the natural, it is easy for her to rest in mourning. But Father, oh God, the spirit of joy, of knowing you, of understanding what it is you have been doing behind the scenes for these many years, of understanding that Mama was willing to transition. Lord God gave her strength in her inner man and is able to allow her not to sorrow as the world. But Father, oh God, to, to, to trust you with every aspect, oh God, Lord, it is not something that we are taking lightly. And we know, Lord God, that you will perfect all that concerns the Okafo family, oh God. All that concerns us, you have made the name again. And the Chuku family, her mom, oh God. Her, mom, her, 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 her maternal family, Father God. Our Lord and our God, we thank you. You will open up doors that no man can shut. You make all grace to abound. And you continue to, to call perfect that which you have started in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Now, now the miracle of this experience was when she called me. I was driving. And she called me and says, uh, you know, my mom has... I asked after her. Go ahead. <laughs> he called because prayer has been on for her for a period of weeks. So as soon as he, I called him, he, he called me back and said, and then he spoke and said, that's Mama Chima. Then I took a deep breath and I told her she has gone to be with God. And he said, and you're saying it this way. I said, this is the only way I can say about it. I couldn't say otherwise. Of course, I cried after hearing the news. But thereafter, the Holy Spirit took over. So that's how it happened. And the prayer was out of. And uh, thank you for your prayer. And God has answered. Amen. Now, for me, the miracle was how she handled the situation and the expression she gave with understanding. And I had seen her in the morning before. And uh, this was totally different. She has understanding that Mama had gone to be with the Lord. And the comfort of the Lord set in. Because you pray, hallelujah, and we are standing with you continually, that the Lord himself, who has taken over, will continue to raise his sword on your behalf to protect you and your family. You don't have to sound like the world. Mama is in a better place. And so we have the comfort of the Lord. So when people see you, tell them you're joyful, you're excited. She lived a godly, good life. And her legacy is all over you and your children. Uh, she became Cordelia when Cordelia went to America. And she was there in the family until each and every one of them grew up to become a young adult. Amen. So she has served her generation and generations to come well. And so we celebrate Mama who is now in heaven. What a place to be. Come on, somebody give the Lord praise. I say give the Lord praise. So we are celebrating Mama Chima. My wife's namesake. Amen. The only extraordinary to Chima. What has got to heaven. Amen. So when she says, Chima, you have come. And she'll be thinking about his daughter here. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. God bless you. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Amen. Put on the whole armor of God. Amen. He will not fail you. You've been carrying also carrying the world and nations in prayer. Now prayers are coming your way. And it's going to be a quick jump to greatness, to unbelievable height. Get ready for 2024. Amen. Great things are coming. Oh, yeah, go. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Any more miracle moments? Hallelujah. 
hand that uh, blessing to somebody. Yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. to Nigeria second week of December for wedding of my son my last child and um, before then I was kind of not worried but I was you know saying the Lord I want you to give me a word for the moment and he said my peace I give unto you and I went with that peace in my heart and the Lord made everything wonderful and beautiful. You know, when the Lord gives you a word, it doesn't mean that the devil will not come to fight it somehow or the other. But in all, we had victory. Praise God. We had some little challenges, but the Lord took care of everything, everything to his glory and to his honor. And everybody was happy for us and excited, you know, for us in our church. Although we couldn't invite everybody, but they were still happy for us. They knew where we were coming from. I explained to them that this is not my wedding. This is not my husband's wedding. It's this young generation. So we have to work with them. And we did. And they understood. And they were happy for us. It was a, one, a beautiful wedding. And I thank God for the ministration. I thank God for the word at the wedding. And I know that this world will grow in their life to multiplication in Jesus' name. And I'm so much grateful for my home church because in the midst of all the running around, I knew I had an anchor hold at home. I, I knew I had people praying for me. I knew I had people that were standing in camp for us. I say, may the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I want to thank God for preparing Nigeria for me. I want to thank God especially for my husband. You know, when you have a figure in Nigeria, it makes your life a little easy. Uh, we did not all go from here. So my husband was there holding forth, doing all that he could do before we came. And when we came, it was a slight drill. I said God continued to bless him, uphold him, and strengthen him from age to age in Jesus' name. I appreciate you all. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you for praying for Chinemeze and Chizoba. Thank you for all your twenty quarter handshake. Yes, that's what they call it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all. And I say, may the Lord bless you all and give you reason to be joyful, to rejoice and be glad. In, your, in this season we are going into to the glory of God. Thank you and God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So we seal all the testimonies so far. 
with the blood of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us in 2023 as we celebrate right now the birthdays, right? Praise God. Hallelujah. The end of the year. Hallelujah. Amen. So fancy. So if you were born in 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 December, what of weddings? No, no weddings. Oh, it says happy birthday. Yes, yeah, so Pastor Cam, Sister Favor, 